how to do a work energy problem with electric fields. And it's very similar to how we set up and work uh, work energy problems with gravitational potential energy. So you can see I've already drawn a picture representing a Van de Graaff generator that has been charged. It is negatively charged. And um, you can see inside the Van de Graaff the belt that is what carries the charge from this terminal down at the bottom inside the base of the Van de Graaff the belt turns around and carries that charge up to this terminal where it drops it off and then once the charge is there this is it spreads out more or less evenly over the entire surface of the conducting dome of the Van de Graaff so uh, that negative charge on the Van de Graaff has created an electric field that I've also drawn. That's these electric field lines pointing radially inward. That's the direction of the field because that's the direction a positive test charge would experience a force. The test charge would be attracted to the negative Van de Graaff. So, um, you might be wondering where does that negative charge come from? and it actually comes from the ground so this terminal at inside the base connects ultimately to the plug the Van de Graaff is plugged in to an outlet which goes has a ground wire so basically the earth is supplying that negative charge that ultimately charges up the Van de Graaff so when we do work energy problems um, we need to define a number of things. We always need to define the beginning and end locations for our problem. And the beginning location in this problem will be the bottom terminal, and the end location will be the top terminal. And the goal of this problem is going to be to find how much work must the belt and the motor, which is turning the belt, how much work must that belt do to move an electron from this terminal to the top terminal. Now because the dome has already gotten a negative charge, that negative charge on the dome will be repelling the additional electron that I'm trying to add on. And so the more charge I put on the dome, the harder that motor and belt are going to have to work to put additional charge up there. So we're going to calculate that work for an example. Okay. When we do work energy problems, we also always have to define a system. And in this problem, obviously the electron that's moving from the initial to final location has to be in our system. And as the charges on the Van de Graaff dome and the electric field created by those charges of the Van de Graaff. And this is exactly analogous when we do mechanics problems to including the earth in our system and the gravitational field of the earth. And the reason we do that is so that we can say that our system, object plus earth, in the case of a mechanics problem, has what we were going to call, what we've called gravitational potential energy. So in this problem we will say that our system, which includes the electric field and the charges on the dome, has electric potential energy stored up. So that's our system. We also need to make note of what's outside the system that's going to do work. And in this case, that's the belt and motor. I did not include those in my system. And because I wanted to know how much work that those external forces are going to do. All right. Then um, finally, uh, to set up our problem, we go to the work energy principle which says that the network by the external forces must always equal the change in energy of our system. This system has two kinds of energy, kinetic energy, K, and electric potential energy, U electric. So I put the change in K and the change in U. I've crossed out the change in K because I want to keep this problem simple. We're going to assume that this belt moves an electron at a constant speed from here to here. So the kinetic energy of that electron hasn't changed. So that goes away. And we're just left with the change in electric potential energy. 
Now we've learned that the electric potential energy of a system is related to the voltage uh, at different locations in that, s that that system is at. So electric potential energy in this problem times the voltage of the location where that electron is. So therefore the change in electric potential energy is Q times voltage final minus Q times voltage initial. Now I've made up some numbers for this problem for the voltages. Uh, we can always define a reference voltage zero at any location we want but usually we define it to be zero at the lowest point in the electric field. The lowest point is the place that the electric field lines are pointing towards and that is the surface of this Van de Graaff. So I've defined the voltage there to be zero volts. With that definition anywhere higher up farther uh, backwards on any of these electric field lines will be at a higher voltage and in this problem I have made up the number that relative to that dome the ground is at a voltage of 4000 volts okay so this the ground and this metal terminal is at 4000 volts alright so we're almost done we're going to calculate now the work done by that belt and motor and that what this says is that that work goes into changing the electric potential energy of the electron Van de Graaff system. All right, to finish. Uh, I'm just going to put in numbers. We define the final voltage to be zero, so I can cross that out. The charge of an electron is negative, and it's important that when we calculate electric potential energy, there's no absolute value sign on this Q. So I need to make that negative 1.6, 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. The initial voltage is 4,000 volts. This negative sign comes from my change in electric potential energy formula. Those two negative signs will cancel out, giving me a total work of 6.4, 10 to the negative 16th coulombs times volts. Well, a volt is a joule per coulomb, so a coulomb times volt is just a joule. So the belt and motor do a positive amount of work, which makes sense, because they have increased the electric potential energy of this system, just like lifting a box off the floor to a higher point in the gravitational field, you would have to do positive work. In this problem, we have lifted an electron, although since an electron has negative charge, we have to do positive work to lift an electron to a lower place in the electric field, as we just saw.